What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jordan and today we're going to be finishing up our JDM blast pipes. So stick around. In the last video, we turned straight pipe into JDM blast pipes by cutting it up and tacking it together. If you saw that video already, like and subscribe. We'd love your support and want to hear from you in the comments. If you're new to the channel, go back and check out that video and then come back after that because today we're going to be separating the pieces, polishing up everything really, really nice, and then seam welding it all the way around. I'm excited for the project. I hope you are too. So let's get to it. Today we don't have a whole lot of steps to get through, but each step takes time and it's pretty tedious. First thing we're going to do is we're going to quickly separate the collector from the pipes. So we're going to cut these tack welds here and separate everything. And then we're going to polish the tubes as well as the collector. And then once everything is polished, we're going to be seam welding everything all the way around. But I wanted to point out our safety equipment for today. The polish that I have says that we should use a respirator when using the product. So I'm going to be using a respirator while I'm polishing the metal and I'll be wearing some glasses to protect my eyes. I definitely take safety seriously, especially when we're talking about breathing in harmful chemicals or things flying at your eyes. It's always better to be safe than sorry. And even if you look a little bit funny while doing it, or if it's a little bit uncomfortable to wear the equipment, it's always better for you in the long run. So I'm always, always trying to be as careful as possible. Today I'll be using this polisher to polish the pipes and as well as some blue polish. I got this from Harbor Freight, really inexpensive piece of equipment and uh, I've been really impressed with it. I think it's definitely a quality piece. It's from uh, Central Machinery and I found that this blue polish is best for polishing stainless steel. In hindsight, I should have bought a couple more of these. That way I can stack them to get some more surface area for polishing, but we're just gonna work with what we have and it's gonna take a while, but it's gonna look great. All right, guys, let's dive right into the project. We've got a lot of work to do, so let's do it. The cutoff wheel made pretty quick work of that. We just broke these tacks here, split it apart. And what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to clean these with some acetone and we'll get to polishing. So when you're polishing tube, I wouldn't say that there's a best way to do it, except you want to be as effective and as time efficient as possible. Polishing takes a ton of time, especially up here when we're going to want to be as close to a mirror finish as possible. It's going to be very tedious, but the final result is going to be worth it as long as you put in the time. So I just put a couple earbuds in, play my favorite music and make it as chill as possible. Once you've polished your pipe, you're going to want to get one of these drill attachments so you can drill the inside of the exhaust tip. This is what everyone's going to see when they look at the car and also when the owners are washing the car. They're going to be right here. So you want to make sure that the pieces that they're looking at are going to be just as good as the outside. For the first round of polishing, we use this wheel, which if you, you'll find these at the store. Um, this kind of like your medium grit polish wheel. And then over here, you're going to find the more fine grit polish wheel. And this is what we're going to use for our final polish. All right, here's a little side by side comparison of polished tube versus non polished. I think it makes a huge difference. And if you think so too, comment below and let me know. Now that the tubes have been polished, we are ready to start welding. This is definitely one of the most exciting parts of the whole project, but it's also a bit stressful because if you mess it up here, it could set you back a long way. The plan for welding these pieces together is similar to the polishing plan where we're going to weld each individual piece by itself. And then at the very end, we're gonna connect them here and here, right there and right there. And we're going to save those for the last pieces because if we were to tack these together and do them all together as one, it would be very difficult to weld between each one of these pie cuts at each 
section along the pipe. So doing them separately lets us do 85% of the work the easy way and only 10% of the work the hard way. Earlier this week, I picked up a new tank of argon and it's not the easiest thing because my Cayman can only fit this small 70 cubic foot tank, but we are totally full and I'm curious to see how much argon we use to finish this project. Our argon tank is reading just below 1500, so it's a little bit overfilled. By the end of the project, I think we're only gonna use maybe half or three quarters of the tank, but we'll see how much we use. Some of you might already know why we have argon for TIG welding, um, but the short of it is that when you're welding stainless steel, you need to have argon to shield uh, the hot metal when you're welding on top and on bottom, so on the outside of the tube and on the inside of the tube. And one piece of equipment that is really handy to use when welding tube is purge plugs. Purge plugs come in a couple of different varieties, but I have these silicone ones here, and I'm gonna show you how they work. Work. You take the purge plug, you put it right into this hole here, and in a perfect world you would have one for every hole, and you would put a tube in here, let the argon go through. Argon is heavier than air, so if you turn this vertically, the argon is going to be pushing the oxygen out through the top of the tube, and then once it's full of argon and there's no oxygen in there, you can start welding up all the seams of your piece. At some point, I was thinking about doing a purge plug shoot off video. So if you're interested in seeing a video where I compare the different types of purge plugs, go in the comments and let me know. I also weld these small little radiator tubes. And with smaller projects like this, different purge plugs might work better for different projects. If you wanna see that, let me know and we'll make it happen. One thing that I love about working with such a big pipe is that even if I weld a bunch of times, it disperses the heat all over the part, which makes it so that I can do multiple welds at a time. Whereas if I'm doing something as small as this, I can only weld once or twice before the part is almost completely overheated. And to get these nice colors and what people want to see, you really have to be in control of your heat. The metal welded up so nicely. I'm super stoked with how it's turning out and I cannot wait to tack this part, this part and get it done. This is looking so nice, wow. I just got done welding on the first half of the blast pipe. That went really well, and I went to go ahead and tack on the second pipe. And what I noticed is that during the welding process of all these pie cuts, things kind of move around a little bit, and that's to be expected. When you weld all the way around, it pulls and tugs at the pie cuts and the different joints, and things may get out of line a little bit. So what I noticed is that when I tacked it up, this second pipe here is just a little bit off. It's a little bit down, and I want it to be pulled up a little bit higher. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a few more tack welds on the top side so that way the tack welds will, will, when they cool down, they'll pull and they'll pull that side up. So it's a really cool tip is that you can use your tack welds to help position things on the final fit up. As I'm finishing up this welding job, I'm getting to the most difficult weld out of the whole project. And that weld is gonna be in between the pipes here, and it's the last joint. Usually I use this big old 19 millimeter cup, um, which it works amazing for gas coverage. But because this is such a tight space, this cup is gonna get in the way. I have a 10 millimeter cup here, which is going to give me a lot more room, and it'll allow me to get in there a lot better. It's still gonna be tight, it's still gonna be difficult, but you can see the difference between the two cups is pretty big. So let's get to it. All right, so we got it welded up. It's definitely the ugliest weld out of the whole project, but check out this stick out I had to use on this thing. Absolutely ridiculous. And I bumped up my CFH to 60 CFH for that one weld. So this thing was hissing with argon gas, but we got it done and that's all that matters. There is nothing more satisfying than making a plan, buying some material, chopping it up, welding it together, doing something that you've never done before and really pushing yourself. So without further ado, let's see the final product. If 
If you lasted this long in the video, I really appreciate your time. I had a great time making these JDM blast pipes. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And if you did, like and subscribe, comment below. But until next time, see you later. For those of you that are curious, uh, I used about two thirds of a tank of argon. This tank is 70 cubic feet.